Hey, good morning, and welcome to the Morning Man of Podcast. I'm Pastor Greg, and it's good to be with you. We are working our way through the Psalms, and one of the things that becomes obvious in the Psalms is that the Psalm writers, and to this point, it's been just David, uh, the psalmists go through problems, and they go through problems a lot. And one of the things that you discover as a Christian is that we have problems. Jesus said in John 16, in the world you shall have tribulation. You shall have problems. You're going to have difficulty. Things are going to not go well for you at times in circumstances and so on. You're going to have trouble in relationships. You're going to be at odds with your kids. You're going to go through marital difficulty. You're going to find yourself in financial challenges. It's in the world. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have problems. It's a part of life. And so for believers is we need to process our problems using the gospel to give us perspective. So problems aren't our enemies. Problems are actually our servants. And so our light and momentary suffering is working out for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That is the very difficulties that we don't like. I mean, we don't like to have these problems, but those problems will result in a more glorious and joyful eternity. And we will be glad that we went through the suffering that we did uh, for this short period of time that we have on earth. So David finds himself once again experiencing problems. And he begins in Psalm 28 saying, To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me. Lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. So you're, you're my rock. Notice he doesn't say you're, you're a rock. You know, you're one of a number of rocks that I turn to, you know, in my time of trouble. No, you're my rock. And you are the one that I look to when things go south, when things are difficult. You're my stability. I'm building my life upon you. You're my rock. Well, verse 2. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands uh, toward your most holy sanctuary. So, So hear me, Lord. Hear me, Lord. I'm lifting up my hands. You know, the lifting of hands, it it pictures uh, a number of things in the Bible. It it certainly pictures, it signifies praise to God. Uh, In Psalm 63, Uh, verse 4, it says, I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift my hands. You know, we think of um, uh, 2 Timothy, I think it's 2, lifting holy hands to him in prayer. So, So signifying prayer and praise, but also the lifting of hands, it, it, it signifies surrender. It's, God, my hands are empty. And, you know, if somebody comes to you uh, and they have a gun in in their hand and they point it at you and say, stick them up, what do you do? You, uh, okay, nothing in my hands. You got me. I'm surrendered. Well, the same is true in a sense when we lift our hands to the Lord. We're saying, I surrender. Nothing in my hands. Have your way with me. And so the lifting of hands. Well, verse 3. Do not drag me off with the wicked, with the workers of evil who speak peace with their neighbor while evil's in their heart. Give to them according to their work and according to the evil of their deeds. Give to them according to the work of their hands. Render them their due reward because they do not regard the works of the Lord or the works of his hands. And he will tear them down and build them up no more. So David prayed that God would deal severely with his enemies. Now, I know we, on on this side of the cross, we who live in the New Testament times, 
um, we tend to to not pray these imprecatory kind of prayers that David prayed. David was dealing with flesh and blood enemies, but we're told in the New Testament, in Ephesians 6, for instance, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. And so our enemies are in the invisible realm, and they are Satan and his demonic uh, horde that are set against us. And so we should pray diligently against the enemy and his devices and so on. And we should be very much engaged in the warfare that is spiritual. Well, verse 6, Bless the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. I love that. Isn't that the, the pattern of the Christian life? We're going along, loving the Lord. Life starts to go south. Bad circumstances happen. We cry out, God, help me. Lord, I'm lifting my hands to you. Please hear me. Deliver. God answers. He delivers us. And then we're just praising him for his goodness to us. It happens again and again and again. I know we wish we could just kind of find that that sweet spot in life where all the, the you know the bad stuff doesn't happen and the challenges and the problems but gang listen we really need to learn how to embrace that as necessary and give thanks to God for it I think of the words of Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, where he's crying out for deliverance from his thorn in the flesh. You talk about a problem, thorn in the flesh. It makes him miserable at times. He cries out for healing, for deliverance, and God says, nope. This thorn in your flesh, this messenger of Satan is actually serving you, Paul. You're a proud, arrogant guy, and this has been given to you uh, to keep you uh, from being puffed up beyond measure. And my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And Paul then says, oh, Lord, I will therefore gladly exult in my weaknesses and my infirmities. Man, if that's if if this problem in my life is going to result in greater manifestation of your power in and through my life, then I'm in. I'm in. Let the problem stay. Lord, bring that stuff on. Lord, I love you more than I love comfort. And so that was David's heart. Verse 8, the Lord is, my, or is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Oh, save your people and bless your heritage to their shepherd and carry them forever. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Great prayer. Great prayer for God's people. He is our shepherd and uh, he leads us through this life, right, right through the valley of the shadow of death. There's all kinds of problems surrounding us always. Sometimes they overcome us and overwhelm us. But the Lord is our rock, and he delivers us out of all trouble. So be encouraged, Christian. Jesus is your rock.